once again, I said, all right, I'm back at it, babe. I'm, I'm, this is me. I got to do it. And so my wife was like, do what you got to do. She said, but I need the bills paid. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she said, I, ain't, I can't go through this no more. All right, all right. So I'm over here praying. I'm like, Lord, please let this one jump off, right? <laughs> so, so we started this company. My partner and I, we were, um, it was two of us. This is, a, it goes back to thermal fax machines. You remember the fax machines with the rolled up thermal yes, I paper? I do, yep. So we had two telephones and a thermal fax machine. Our office was on top of an Indian uh, meat store. So they was bringing in dead goats. So the whole office smelled like, like crazy. <laughs> so we're in there and we grew that business uh, from two men with a thermal fax machine, over 50 employees, a uh, couple hundred million dollars a year uh, in revenue, not sales. Mm -hmm. Come on. revenues. That's money's coming into your bank account. So all you entrepreneurs and prospective entrepreneurs, I don't care what your sales numbers look like. It's about the revenues. What's coming in the hip pocket national. So we were rolling six, seven years. Crash comes. 2007. Stop, stop, stop there. Stop there. Yep. How long did it take for you to get that company rolling? Oh, bro. Uh, we were in that one, that little office for a year. We moved over, I don't know, we moved over to Jersey, right over the bridge in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We were there for a year there and we got our first couple of employees. Then we moved back over the bridge to Philly and that's where we were uh, banging out. Uh, so really to get it really rolling, to be honest, man, about 18 months. So we had our overhead was low. Our rent was a grand a month and it was just me and my partner. We were doing the processing, the selling, everything. And so... At that time, if you're making three to four points on a mortgage and you do a $300,000 mortgage at just say even three points, that's nine stacks. That's nine grand. Mm -hmm. And you got low overhead, you know, and that's okay. how we built it. Yeah. So we started getting it and using our networks and our contacts. And, you know, from the you know, Merrill Lynch and Dean Witter days, so I used to do a lot of, you know, big, crazy houses for, you know, my boys that were in entertainment or athletes. And so um, that kind of really propelled us to the next level. Now they're telling their friends and, and you know, coworkers. And it just, I mean, it, it was crazy, man. I never sold drugs in my life, but that, that to me felt like some drug money, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got hundreds of millions of dollars coming through the door. Like, that, that's a lot of money. Crazy, now, man. Talk to me about the transition because now you all the way in it. It's I'm one in. thing to be an uh, 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 entrepreneur who is self-employed, but right. you're a boss now. You're talking about we have 50 employees. So I want to yeah. I, I tap into a couple of things. Yeah. I love what you said about starting very lean. Mm -hmm. You didn't have an ego about it because I see nah. so many entrepreneurs, they want to come out the box and they want to they, they, they put on a show. Ain't making right. no money, but... They got to have the fancy office. Everything right. has to look and resemble like they're making money. Right. That's the wrong way to do it. Exactly. I don't care where your office is. Your, your <laughs> office can be in somebody's basement somewhere. Keep mm -hmm. your overhead low. It's about yep. low overhead, high profit, and, and, and making sure that your margins are good. Yeah. But for you, was there a... Uh, 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 transition in terms of now I'm not self-employed, I'm now a people manager. I have to actually, because people are dependent on you. They're paying yeah. their bills with a check that you're writing. And a lot of bosses are not great bosses. So I don't know if you were a, 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 a people manager in your past life or if this is a new skill set. but I know for many entrepreneurs, as they grow, the hiring process, uh, retention, making yeah. sure that people are, are, are coming to work and they're doing the best job to help grow the company and they feel inclusive of the company. Th these are all things that entrepreneurs learn as they go along. So talk exactly. to me about that process. Well, one of the things is my partner, um, very good people person. And so I'm, I'm a people person too, but 
my other skill, probably one of my best skills is operations. And I actually, I truly enjoy, I like being in the background. I want to be, so this podcast thing is a little different for me because I'm used to being in the background and I'm orchestrating stuff. I don't need to be out on, you know, out front. But my, my business partner at the time, that's what he was great at. He was great with the sales people. Um, he handled the sales staff. I handled the admin staff. Okay. And so um, it's a difference because you hit it right on the head, man. I used to tell my wife, I'm like, man, I got two families. I got my real family at home, but I got a family at the office. And those dynamics, man, they can, they can kill you, you know, because you have, oh, this person doesn't like that person, it, you know. And it's like, look, guys, I got kids at home. All right. Can we just get down to what we do and start making paper? Everybody's eating, right? Everybody's eating. I mean, my process is getting crazy bonuses. So I'm like, yo, let's let's focus on the job at hand. But yeah, if if you don't, if you're not a people person and you don't understand the dynamics, it's almost like being a coach, man. So you know that you may not necessarily have if you're a basketball coach, the best five players starting for you because you know you might need somebody coming off the bench that's going to boost or bolster your second team. And that player has to be amenable to being, look, I know I'm one of the top five, but this is how I need to use you. And so if you, if you can build a team and everybody understands what their position is and not just what their position is, but how does that affect the group and the team as a whole? This is why you're important, Sean. We need you to do this. You know, Jay, this is why you're important because we need you to do this so we can all do this. And I think once you, I started breaking it down to them like that, you know, I don't care if you were a telemarketer, you were important. You know what I mean? You were important to the whole unit. That's how we move, man. So if you don't have people skills, find somebody that does because that goes a long way in, in the actual, you know, benefit of your organization and the success of your organization. So that's how I really dealt with it. Yeah, I mean, before we move on, I think that that's, you know, one of the reasons so many businesses fail is because, you know, your business is only as good as number one, your product, number two, the people who are the machine behind right. that engine, right? And exactly. if they do not feel valued, if they do not feel as though they are benefiting, not necessarily only from the profits, but from the growth of the business and that brand, they are not out there living it. You can't grow your business. So you have to really, number one, hire great people, but you have to nurture them and make them feel part of the growth of your business in all areas of it. Exactly. Well, can, let me, can I just add to that real quick? Please, please. Um, one of the things that, um, and we talked off the air before, one of the things is that, there were about four of my loan officers uh, that were well-paid that wanted to go out on their own. And so they were comfortable enough with me to come to me, say, look, man, this is, this is what I eventually want to do. All right, cool. While you're here, do what you need to do. Don't be stealing none of my, my clients or none of that. But, but I'm going to help you. We'll help you get set up on your own, and we don't want nothing for it. You see what I mean? So my thing is, I always said my philosophy was if there is a man or a woman that feels they can take care of their family a better way, then I'm never going to hold them back because that's how I would want somebody to treat me. So instead of firing them and stuff like that, we actually had a plan that, hey, are you interested in starting your own thing eventually? And we had some people that were like, nah, I'm good. I don't have all, any of the headache and I'm making 20, 30 grand a month. Mm -hmm. don't bother me. but then you had other people once they understood that it, it, it was more than just making money as a boss you know bro you got payroll you got taxes you got all i mean it's it's a totally different ball game but the people who wanted to do that we helped uh, at least it was four of them that were actually pretty successful we helped them transition and when we interviewed people what is your why? What is your, your long-term goal? Because I would rather help somebody get on their long-term goal. Hey, man, I know I probably shouldn't say this, but I want to eventually own my own business. That's cool. Learn what you can here. Long as you're doing what you're doing, we're going to help you. And so that's how we kind of developed the goodwill, even when things went bad. 
uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about with the crash, we had goodwill with our employees because they knew it wasn't just about money. We were there to, you know, we, we cared about each other. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.